Welcome to Tales from the Flipside. Um, we have a modern bangers list for you. So let's go ahead and get this started. All right, before we get going on this, people ask, what are modern bangers, right? Well, this is a term we use. Um, these are big, big modern books that we think have big upside going forward. So, you know, these books are not cheap. They're not ghosts either, um, but a list of books we put together that we think are particularly noteworthy if you're interested in collecting moderns. So let's jump right into it. All right. So Ultimate Fallout 4, the second print. And uh, you're probably wondering yourself, why are we talking about the second print here? Um, well, um, we'll get into that in a second. Um, real quick, um, uh, there are about 15,000 of these ordered um, by retailers as best that we can identify. Book is currently selling for north of a thousand dollars in 9.8, and uh, they're about 1700 on the census. You know, one of the things I like about this book, um, and what you hear a lot when this book comes up, is that people are, are, are gravitating towards it because the first print is out of reach. And I think there's definitely an element of truth to that. Um, that said. I think there's something else to it as well. I think when people start collecting um, Ultimate Fallout 4, they're going to want both this and the first print because you can see Miles' face on this. Um, so, you know, the people who have the first print, they're going to want to probably have this one as well. And there's just not enough of these to go around, right? For people who want them because they can't afford the first print and people who just want to have them in their collection, given the limited print run, I think these are going to evaporate. And I... Will be on. I'll go on the record saying that I think the price of this book is going to um, be very close to what you see for the first print. So, you know, this is a book that I think has got a long way to go. Maybe this is the most important of all Martins currently. Who knows? Um, it's certainly up there, but a book I really like and um, probably worth owning if you can. So, I have a funny story about this book. Um, I was looking for a first print forever for like when it was right in the $50 range and I could not find it like, or at least in the condition that I wanted. And I happened to be at my LCS and I was digging through back bins and I found the second print for $10. And of course I'm going to snag it up because I was like, Oh, this is going to be a perfect placeholder. Like, and so I still have it. I think like six months later, that's when the start of ultimate fallout four just started exploding. Like, in price and i was just like wow there's no way i'm going to be able to ever afford a first print now and so but as we all know when you're buying books and major keys like prices go in the lull and they come back up and all that so i definitely picked up a first print not too long ago uh, but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm glad i picked up the second print yeah, I, I'd like to say something. You know, uh, I was thinking about it today. I can't, I still can't get, um, wrap my head around this. I mean, when this came out, when both of them came out, when the second print came out, I, I looked at the print run, and I was going, this should be the one right now. I mean, during that time, um, um, Kamala Khan's second print was booming, um, and Noel was booming, all these second prints. And I think this was, uh, you know, everybody – just overlooked it for some reason and i i bought one but it really didn't move until now um i'm just so it's just so mind-boggling you know everybody is like the market's just so unpredictable but uh i feel like this is a this is a winner and in, in the in the long haul i mean fifteen thousand, the supply just doesn't meet the demand in the future and I think a lot of people are going to look back at this book and go, in, "Hey, I don't have one. I have I have the first print, but who who's who has the the second? So I'm still I'm still wondering, you know, what happened? I mean, even the even Invincible Iron Man nine second print, extremely lower print run than than the first. Um, so I'm I'm still debating. I mean, what should I get? <laughs> should I go with this one or should I go with the first print? Yeah, I think this is a, you know, the, the sky's pretty much the limit for not only the, the second print, but, you know, every, every print that, you know, the variant. And I think it would take a black swan event for 
uh, for it to 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 stop growing. I mean, I think Spider Verse Two would have to to bomb horrendously, like a uh, like the uh, Mario Brothers movie, or you know, <laughs> there'd have to be like a, a terrorist named Miles Morales, or you know, something we just don't see coming. <laughs> Um, and, and, you know, these things happen, like weird things happen. That's why I, I don't know if everyone's familiar with that term black swan, but it's just something you just don't see coming. And it would have to be something like that that would uh, have to happen for this uh, for for the growth to to stop or 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 to even reverse. I mean, it. It's almost unimaginable at this point, and I'm not a real big, you know, hype man, uh, you know. But this is something that is is one of those rare ones where I'm just, uh, I, I just, I just believe in it. So, I mean, where, do you, where do you see this book in two years, Steve? Uh, or anybody? Yeah, uh, four thousand dollars. Uh, you know, I don't. You know, I. Yeah. I I mean, we haven't even had a Spider-Verse movie for, it seems like, forever. What, three years or something like that? I mean, we haven't even had Miles in live action yet. And, you know, that might take, a, you know, a while. So I, I just feel like there's still so many more catalysts to be had. Yeah. I mean, conservatively, I, I, I see this book should be trading neck and neck, if not maybe above the first print. Um, I mean, you can argue very, very convincingly that this is his first cover appearance as well, right? You can't oh, see yeah. his face on on the first one, right? Who is that guy in the shadows? That's, I mean, that, yeah, that I never, I never thought about that point. way. I mean, that's a great point. I mean, like, you know, all we've been talking about is rarity in books, right? And and what collectors want? They want scarcity. They want value. I mean, uh, that's everything this book is. The special thing about Miles Morales is he's an influencer. You could throw some new Air Jordans on this character and everybody's going to go stand in line and try and get those Miles Morales Air Jordans. Absolutely. Absolutely. Or, yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Oh, man. What other character? You can't even do that with Superman or Batman. This kid is an influencer. And I don't think we've even touched where where this book, any of these books can go. I think 15,000 print run, I don't think too many people know that it only has 15,000 uh, print run. I think uh, maybe after the show, they will. Yeah, now I, now I got to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what we have next. All right, so uh, the way we put these books together, we I just kind of link them. So uh, listen, I I adore this book. I just picked up another copy for myself the other day. Um, this is one of those books I can't explain in that it is far more difficult to find than its 1 in 15 ratio would suggest. 1 in 15 isn't exactly hard. There's only 200 of these, 205 of these on the census. How is that possible for a book with an 87,000 print run, roughly? Um, you don't see these books show up. You just don't see them. And, uh, you know, given where it's trading right now, I, I, I think that there's a lot of upside for this. This is a major, major modern key. Um, this image right here um, is already iconic. And... Um, yeah, a book that I think um, you know we'll we'll see hanging around for a long time. I, I'm just I'm just shocked at that how how little I see of this book out there, whether it be on eBay or anywhere. This book just doesn't. I, I, exist. I don't think there's eighty seven thousand. No way. That book. I mean, that's is what Comicron reported for the. So that that's for the cover. That's for the total cover A. And so not for this version. Okay. Right. So, so you got to take you got to take um, you know about seven percent of that to get to what would be for this cover here. Um, so when I say copies ordered for this whole presentation, it's for the 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 main print, not for the ratio, right? right? So, um, but even when you adjust for that, right, it still feels like 
um, that this book is uh, is far more rare than what a one in fifteen might might suggest. Um, maybe that's just me. I mean, I've looked for it forever. I picked up a few over time, um, but um, anyways, that's just you know my opinion on it. It's hard to say this for a book that's going for almost seventeen hundred dollars, but this is pretty under the radar. I mean, there's a lot of Miles fans that maybe haven't even seen this cover before. Uh, a lot of people haven't been, you know, nobody's told them to buy it yet. If that makes sense. <laughs> you know, it, I, I mean, it, it does. It hasn't shown up on all of these myriad of, of lists you see you see online nowadays. So yeah, no, it, it's I, I I do think it it is under the radar, which means it's a good buying opportunity, like you said, especially if there is actually more scarcity than 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 there should be. I think I've passed up on this once, and I can't believe that I did. <laughs> I think I saw in a dollar bin. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. I, I had one. I bought for five dollars. And I, I think I, I think I sold it raw, or maybe I got a slab nine point eight, but way prematurely. I mean, we're talking probably low three digits. So I, I've learned my lesson, <laughs> and, and you guys have seen. I, you know, I'm not only picking up the uh, first appearance of characters, but the first solo, first issue of solo series of of, of these uh, new generation of Marvel characters. Of course, I don't, I don't think any of them can hold a torch to to Miles, but yeah, great book. All right, what do we? All right, so I'm a Miles fan. In this book, right, it's not his first number one, but it is it is hard as hell to get your hands on. I don't know what happened to Miles at this point, but in, um, when this book came out, um, retailers only ordered about 46,000 copies of this number one. Um, this is a one in 50. So when you think about a one in 50 on a 45,000 print run, you're talking about a pretty rare book because, you know, there are 2000 roughly comic shops, you know, there are, or th these guys are ordering 20 copies each roughly. Right. Um, so most people weren't getting to the 50. Now this was his second series, I believe, or maybe his third. I don't know. I have to think about that one. Uh, but, uh, but this is a really cool cover. Um, and, uh, and a book where I think people start, when I say start, continue to really chase Miles books, this is going to be one that they're going to want to have in their collection, and they're going to be really hard-pressed to find, I think. This is the kind of cover that uh, that Feige will put on screen. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, Tony, absolutely. Um, yeah, the, image, the, the, the imagery here is, is amazing, and, um, and you know, we we had a list of ghosts. This will be on that list one day. I, I strongly believe that this will be on our ghost list eventually, because um, uh, it's it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard to come by, um, but um, a special book, um, I think, within within moderns. I All think right. it could be. Oh, I was gonna say real quick, uh, and it could be like one of those iconic covers that is known for miles over time too. That like. It'll be heavily sought after, and then like it's just like when you think of Miles, you think of this pose right here. I mean, yeah, I don't know if this book's been homaged yet, but it, I, it, it's it's bound to be at, at some point. It, it, it it's so cool. I mean, it, there's only one place. I mean, it it screams New York City. I mean, oh, it, I, yes, it yep. does. You no. Know? Yeah, I mean it. I mean, wasn't that the the book that was the template for? Uh, into the Spider Verse, I mean th that's kind of what what was the template, wasn't it? That that picture that they kind of used as a guide as far yeah. as how we're going to animate Miles. Yeah, I don't know, but that's actually a great point. As you look at it, it definitely has that vibe. Um, that would be actually be great to know for sure, because because I don't. If anybody else does, please please. I, I did hear that somewhere. Like if I can find that, I'll put that in the chat. Yeah, very cool. Uh, that that would that would be super relevant for sure. All right, so um, all new Marvel now point one number one um, second print. 
Um, so Kamala Khan uh, is 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 going to be a huge thing, right? She's getting a show later this year. Um, I don't think we we know how big she's going to be. Uh, she's not going to be Miles by all accounts, but frankly, she's probably not going to be too far off. In this book um, is exceptionally difficult um, to get, um, particularly in high grade. There are only 110 on the census, and uh, if anybody's chased this book, uh, they know how fragile it is. It picks up ticks like no other book I've ever seen. Um, I, I don't know what the deal is with, with the paper on this. It's not a black cover. Uh, but the ticks show up and they're clear as day. Well, uh, I've, I've had a number of these in, in both 9.8 and 9.6. Um, and, and really, uh, besides the ticks, um, it's really the, um, the, the top and bottom, uh, what, what do you call them? The, um, oh, gosh. Binary and, tears. Yeah, the, the binder right. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, but the binary tears. You you know, it's either yeah, it's either one one, you know, the top or the bottom or or both. And uh because it is a it's a thick book. I forget what the I think it has like a six ninety nine cover price on it. So, you know, they try to squeeze a lot of stories and pages into this book. So that that doesn't help. And then uh, th to be honest, you know, from from my experience, there were a, a, a good number of them in five below packs too. So they they were you know hanging um, and and handled you know by folks that weren't you know in the comic field. So that's a great uh, point, Stephen. I think that only adds to the desirability of this book. Um, you know. There, by all accounts, retailers, there's no numbers on Comicron for what retailers ordered for this because it was so small. Um, as a result, Marvel um, printed some and, and, and they basically put them in those five below packs to get rid of them. And, yeah. and people sometimes, you know, mention that as a negative for this book. I'm thinking, well, what are you talking about? That means that half the buyers, right, didn't take care of these books and they're right. gone. They didn't even know what they had. Right. Yeah. Um, and it just adds to its scarcity. I just want to point out 110 total <laughs> on the census. That's minuscule, right? Um, oh, and we're going to compare that to the next book on this list. So the next book, the next book on this list is a very, very, very big book. Um, but let's just keep that number in mind um, when we when we transition to the next slide. If anybody else wants to speak on this, by all means, please. Well, I mean, I, I, I love this book. I mean, I'm not going to go on on a little rant about Kamala Khan, but I mean, this, the second print to me personally is just, it looks a lot more attractive than the first print. I mean, that, that baby blue, um, it just pops. It's just I, more appealing than I the first think it print. I with the green. It just plays better off the green in the background. Yeah, yeah. I think that's exactly yeah. right. And I, I don't know, with me on the, at this point, I think any grade, <laughs> is a go you know i mean these these things are going to dry out dry up you know very very quickly as soon as uh the movie approaches or not the movie the show the tv show sorry about that right i mean just from a, a seller's dealer's perspective i ha so i i was with so our, our friend uh phil from vintage comics and toys he's he sold this this one and i happened to be with him when he got the offer and accepted it and and he and i both ha had the two 9.8s that were listed and i have my ebay store set up in a very particular fashion um so my sales don't show up in sold listings but um someone came along and bought mine for 3500 um a couple days later i do have another 9.8 and I'm not even listing that because I don't want to even get offers for it because I, yeah. I believe there's so much appreciation yeah. to come. And I don't know if any of my other, I don't, I, I forget how many raw copies I have left and if whether they're high grade. So I'm not even putting mine on the market. I, I'm, I'm afraid to tell you how many I have. In no, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't rub it in our face, Joe, please. This <laughs> is my favorite comic book of all time. <laughs> <laughs> You've got good taste then. Yeah. Yep. You know, when you dig and dig and dig, 
and get on your knees looking through long boxes and you know you know the sun's got to shine on a dog's ass one day you know <laughs> and you know and that's why you do this uh because of the chance of 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 getting lucky i mean uh these are rare books we're talking about i mean they're hard to find and if you can get a good grade my god you know i mean you're going to be able to command your own price and steve like you called it i mean like people are, are looking for nine eights and they're they're gonna pay a premium. I mean, and uh, I would I would hold I would hold Steve. I mean, yeah, I I, I I'm I was not in any any rush to sell it. Nope. I I, I turned down th uh, three thousand dollars the other day. I turned it down. Yeah. Oh, and uh, my wife said I was crazy. And you're gonna, you're gonna oh, sorry. Hopefully, I don't get a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, one thing yeah, I, 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 love, <laughs> I love Kamal as a character. I I, uh, I think it's going to do a lot for for the future generation of the MCU, um, bringing in the the kind of readers and the kind of fans to Marvel that that we that we haven't had. I mean, look at this panel. This is uh, this is who current comic fans are for the most part. Um, so uh, shows like uh, Miss Marvel are going to do a lot for, for the future. And I think that we're going to see that in the values of those books. I will say though, Kamal is a tough one, uh, not tough, but she's one of those characters where if you want to chase her first, there are multiple books you have to be looking at. It's not as clear cut as some characters. Um, we, we can talk about that. Cause I, I, I have a, I have a very strong, opinion on that but why don't we actually wait for the next book and we can dig right. into that because i think it's a good segue all right so this by all accounts is a major major book um this uh this second print and you know i just want to qualify i didn't intend for this list to be a second print list but i i i've realized we've had several already um but that is uh that was not the intent uh so um uh, just to put that out there. Um, uh, so, so, so this uh, second printing um, has her in her costume on the cover. Now, the guts of this book, for those who remember, um, it really you just see her. You don't even see her. You see her T-shirt, and you see her flexing. But you, but, but there's no real um, clear picture of her as a character in this book, and it's on a single page. A couple of frames in the very very end of this book, um, so it, it is by all definitions a cameo. That said, her showing up on the cover of the second print elevates this book to to an to an entirely new level. Her first full appearance, her first her very first appearance. I don't want to call it full. Her first appearance was in uh, Captain Marvel fourteen, um, but she's unnamed, and it's a picture in a panel. I went through that book fifteen times. I'm like, where is she? Like that was always listed as her first. I could never find it. And uh, it's a panel. Um, she's there. They kind of went back and said that was her after the fact. That book, in my opinion, and, and, and this is no offense to anybody other who owns it, is wildly overpriced for what that appearance is. It, she's not in her costume. It's, it's just a girl standing in a frame, not saying anything, who they later identified as, as Kamala Khan. So um, it goes for big, big money. Um but, but maybe not where you want to put your money um, if, if you're chasing your appearances. Um, what I wanted to point out in this book compared to the other one is, is that by all accounts, this book is super scarce, like super, super scarce. Yet there's over four times as many of these on the census as the book we just talked about, right? There's 472 versus 110 of that second print. And that second print, if you read that Marvel point one, she is there in her costume. Like there is no question that that is a first full appearance of, of Kamala Khan, right? This book complicates the issue because she shows up on the cover in the second print. So it's muddied the waters a little bit, um, but the guts of this book it, it are also clearly a cameo. Um, but her appearance on the cover of this one uh, make this a, a super, super important book, a very, very difficult, difficult one to track down. 
but by all accounts, far more common than the second print of Marvel of Marvel Point One. So, um, anyways, just I, I thought that was interesting. Just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, and people love cover appearances on their books. So, I mean, I, I mean, I know the interiors, look like what you just said, uh, but I mean, like, you know, people gravitate to what they first see, and it's covers. So, I mean. I guess it kind of makes sense of why the pricing is a bit higher, but I mean, like, you know, if it's like story driven, it's like, yeah, well, point one should be there, you know? Yeah. I mean, this is the first time we ever see her in her costume, yeah. right? So I'm not discounting this book at all. Um, I'm just maybe using this book as a guide to where Marvel point one could potentially go uh, yeah. to and, and above eventually. <laughs> And in Marvel Point One, the the previous book could catch up, but I think where things are right now, this is her, you know, for for Miles her Jurdevic variant, or for Gwen her Land variant. This is this is the key right now, currently for for Kamala. Yeah, absolutely. No, I I would agree with that, Tony. Yeah. All right, um, what do we got next? All right, so we're going to keep with Marvel. You know, another uh, young uh, female character, um, America Chavez. Uh, this is her her first appearance. Um, she doesn't have a cover on any of her first appearances. Um, now, that said, Vengeance Number 1 is a, a book that was very lately ordered. Um, you know, by all accounts, around 25000 uh, for the cover A. Um, this is a one in 15. So on top of that, so take roughly 7% of that 25,000. And um, you're talking about a book um, that's pretty tough to come by. You know, at 2,600, you know, this book feels like it still could double. And I know that sounds a little crazy saying a $5,000 book, but she's going to be, um, she's going to be in Doctor Strange 2. She's... Um, by all accounts, going to be part of the Young Avengers. I, I think the Young Avengers team they're going to go with is going to be something that looks maybe a little bit more like, you know, sort of the second iteration of Young Avengers. Uh, but she's going to be around and a big part of Marvel going forward. And it seems like this book's got a long way to go. Um, you can say the exact same thing, frankly, for um, for the cover A. Um, but, but this one, um, you know, seems like, given the scarcity, could really... Um, reach levels that 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 surprise people. So I, I know I've I've done some poo pooing of some of the um, the America series and some of the her variants, um, but I have three nine point eights of this. None of them are for sale uh, because just like you were saying, Ben, I, I don't I don't think the catalysts have happened yet. You know the. The, as Mel would say, that the beat hasn't uh, built yet for her appearance in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of, of Madness. Um, you know, she's not on uh, the public's radar, uh, the larger public's radar. You know, the, just the, the folks who don't read the comics but go see the the movies. So um, I, I wouldn't even think about uh, listing any of them. Yeah, I, I think also I've I've learned my lesson too because, believe it or not, for the longest time, I couldn't even get like nine hundred dollars for for this book in nine eight. I mean, it just sat and sat. There was a lot of resistance at that nine hundred one thousand mark, and but you know once it broke i mean look at where it is now so i, I feel like i just regret it uh if if i if i sold now i i could see an easy um you know i could see this hitting 5k uh as as the beat does build and we see you know a, a casting and we see uh doctor strange trailer and we you know um uh, see some of the merchandise and everything around it. So, uh, yeah, I, I I believe this is is definitely a modern banger, and there there's there's more banging to come. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I think one thing I like about America Chavez, you know, out of all these young Avengers, out of all these next generation Marvel characters, um, she she is an original character. Actually, she's not taking the moniker from an old generation. Yeah. Uh, she's I understand the plot line and her background has been a little bit convoluted. I think if it when it jumps to the MCU, it might be simplified as her not being an alien. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, just just a gut guess there. Um, but and and just with her name and her costume, I honestly this down the road this is uh you know superman is kind of dc's american hero i mean with with the name and the costume obviously there's captain america but you know she has a she has a really good chance of representing uh representing modern patriotism basically uh in the yeah, modern yeah. World. as an original I, character i think that's a big thing well you know one thing that sticks out for me is if they cast the right actress and the likability of that actress in much the same uh, way as like Shuri, uh, because when she jumped off the screen, if you get another actress to do the same thing that uh, Shuri did, this book will blow up. It'll blow up much like Kamala Khan. Because you need uh, that that, that likability. Will will people like the actress? Will she be likable? Uh, can you follow this this actress for three, four, five movies? Because that's basically what what it's going to come down to. Can you go to the movies and 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 buy a ticket to see see that actress on screen? That, and that's she has been cast by all accounts. I've seen the picture. I can't yeah. remember the actress's name. She yeah, has I think she has. Yeah, but I, I think I think that this character is going to resonate with a lot of Latinas out there in in the community. Um, the cool thing about her, I think, she, I think she's just like Miles. I mean, I don't think she has a, co a a costume. She's just wearing that cool jacket, you know. With, I mean, I see girls dressed up like her out out here in New York, so. Um, and her her stories is so interesting. I think it's really really gonna connect the MCU in the future, especially when it comes to the cosmic universe. Um, but I think that I think that she's gonna um, she's really under the under the radar, and a lot of people are not really paying attention to her. Um, she's a, she's gonna be a really really big star. Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, that's all I gotta say about about. America Chavez. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Oh, All right. Um, Ironheart number one. So there's a lot of books we could talk about. A lot of books I could have put in this list for Riri, right? Her first appearances. But there's something about this book um, that I think has um, crazy upside potential. Now, based on the books we've talked about, you know, the last 9.8 at 620 bucks is relatively modest. Um, but this one in 50 on a, on a, on a you know, copies order around 40,000 uh, makes this a, a really rare book. There's 26 on the census. Uh, this is Jen Bartel. Um, and there's something about the vibe of this cover that I think just really, really will take off. Um, this is her first title under her own name. She technically did have a title under the Iron Man um, moniker, uh, but this Ironheart title um, um, is her own. And uh, this is a book that I think um, is affordable for people at these levels that could have, um, you know, massive, massive upside. And let, let's just be clear. Riri's got, she's got two shows coming out next year, right? Her own, and then she's going to be central to the Armor Wars um, show so she's going to be front and center next year, right? This is not we're not looking way down the road, right? She's she's coming and she's going to come guns a blazing, I think. So, um, anybody have any thoughts on on this one? It checks all the boxes. Uh, this is a banger. This is a banger, Ben. <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> definitely a banger. Yeah, that's a great pick. That's Bartel. Great. Bartel. Yeah. Gosh, Gotta love Bartel, right? Yeah. Yeah. God. 
I mean, it looks like a Cosmo magazine, you know? I was lucky that I got one. It's, it's getting, it's already graded. I don't know the grade yet, but. Her, her new uniform, right? That's her yeah. new uniform, right? Yeah. I just yeah. think it's just a cool cover. I mean, it's so yeah. when I look like. She's like, well, on the shoulders. She's wearing what? She's wearing Jordans or? She's wearing Jordans. She's wearing Jordans. Yeah. She's wearing Jordans. Yeah. Wearing Jordans. Are, she's borrowing Miles. Uh, just uh, like sneakers, Miles. Man. Another influencer, bro. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I love Jen Bartel and Ben. I got to give you credit because yeah. I, I actually picked one of these up uh, because you had mentioned it on a previous show a number of months ago. And uh, yeah, it's it's a really nice, very nice book. All right. Um, good stuff. All right. So um, I believe this book is on the list uh, uh, because of Aaron's suggestion. So this is Spider Gwen number one. Um, a Adam Hughes 1 to 100 um, variant. Um, uh, so a beautiful cover. Um, uh, the, the, you know, Spider Gwen 1, just by all accounts, had a massive print run. Right, so two hundred fifty-four thousand by modern standards—that's enormous, right? Um, so you know, several retailers ordered enough to get to get this particular cover. Um, I, I love it. I think it's beautiful. Um, this is not the last Adam Hughes book on the list tonight. Um, I would say the, the the one knock that this book gets from people when I talk about it is that he didn't draw this picture for this book. I guess they he had driven driven. Uh, had drawn it for something else and they used it for this book. Um, I'm not sure that takes away from anything, but I people sometimes bring that up when I when we talk about this book. Um, but um, but a beautiful uh classic Gwen Stacy cover. Yeah, like so Gwen I said Stacy, man. I mean, like I mean, I don't know what other book he was drawing that for. I mean, it looks like Gwen Stacy. What it was that uh Fables, fables, it could have been right. No, I, I don't think it was you. I, I think it was always a Gwen Stacy drawing, is my understanding. It just wasn't, it was repurposed art, as, ah, as, as to call it. So, right. Uh, I, so, what I've heard is that it was originally drawn for a commission for someone and then it got published to, to like, I guess, you know, for a one in 100 for, for masses or whatever. Uh, so I guess that's a, a bit of the backlash that people get with this cover, but you know. I, I've been picking up Gwen books because, like, I just I enjoy her storyline, and I picked this up I think last year or maybe two years ago at this point, and it was like half the price for for a nine eight already graded, and I could definitely see the potential upswing for it as we get closer into into the Spider Verse, and then, uh, and just you know, basically I didn't want to. Uh, pull the trigger on a Ji Hung Lee Ghost Spider 1 in 100. And I was like, what's the next best book I can settle with within my budget? Yeah. I mean, this has got a couple things going for it, right? I mean, um, Spider Gwen is wildly popular character, and Adam Hughes is a wildly popular artist. So, um, you know, this the, this book's got a lot, a lot supporting it. And uh, I think it's a really good addition, personally. Gosh, I can't believe the price now. I used to see this thing all the time. <laughs> passed it up, passed it up, kept on passing it up. Yeah, no, I hear you, man. <laughs> all right. Um, so listen, I'm, I'm going to come out and say, when I think about my favorite, my very, very favorite, favorite modern covers, um, this is this is it. Um, so this is... Uh, this is Spider Gwen Ghost Spider number one. So this is not um, uh, her first series. This is when it, uh, her series took on the Ghost Spider um, title. Um, this is Ji Hung Lee, um, one of my favorite artists. Um, this book um, had about eighty nine thousand ordered, so significantly less um, than what we saw for her first title. Um, and it's a one in 100. Um, so there's about 258 on the census. And I was very surprised by this, but the last sale of this book was for 18,050. I, I thought this book was still selling in the sort of the 1100 to 1200 range, but it seems to have taken a gap up. Um, listen, this book's got no first appearances. There's nothing to it other than just being 
um, in my opinion, one of the most iconic modern covers, period. Anybody got any thoughts? I'm probably never ever going to get a copy now at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you you want to hear a true story? So I, I, I was watching Unpressable Defects when this book came out. And I said, I got to have that book. And then I think Mel V, I could have strangled him through my TV. <laughs> he said, this is the greatest cover ever. <laughs> and then the, I, couldn't, I couldn't find the book after he did that at an affordable price. Because he goes, I got it. I got it right here. And he goes, this is the greatest cover I've ever seen. And I go, why, Mel? My God. <laughs> and man, and, and I've never, never held this book in my hand. Never. So I've got a couple interesting stories to follow. So so when Mel was going, you know, we share these slides with everybody in, in, in the modern playbook. When I was sharing these slides, Mel spoke up and said, yes, this book needs to be on the list. This is you know, hits all of the keys. This is this is a modern banger by by every standard, and he thinks it be shall, should be selling a lot more than what it's selling for right now. Um, so I got a copy of this book. I won this book raw in an auction for two hundred and fifty bucks about a year and a half ago. I don't know how it happened. People must have just forgotten about it. I mean, it's it, like when I won it, I was like, "There's no way this guy's going to mail this to me," and if he does, it's going to have the shit kicked out of it, right? So I get it. Actually, there was more than one book in the auction. I didn't even realize that. I won another uh, Ghost Spider book that's probably worth, you know, 150 bucks right now as it is, um, a Clayton Crane um, cover. Anyways, um, I sent it into CGC, comes back 9.8. I mean, it was literally the best eBay auction I've ever had in my entire my entire life. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, I, when, when, this thing, when, I, when this thing showed up, I was like, yes, the guy sent it. I, I can't believe this. It was uh, it was unbelievable. It was probably about a year and a half ago, although that could, it may be a bit longer because the whole COVID thing is really sort of screwed up with my uh, perspective on time. But um, but anyways, yeah, I'm happy to have this book, um, and um, um, yeah, it's just it's stunning. Yeah, people are asking like eight hundred dollars for a raw copy right now. Yeah. Uh, because I'm watching, like, obviously. But, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I'm kicking myself for not buying a 9.8 when it was $800. But, yeah. yeah it sat at eight or 900 for, for quite a long time. You know, you know how a couple of years ago you'd walk into your LCS and you'd see the variant covers or the, the ratio variants up high and there'd be, like, $95 on them? And you're thinking, are you kidding? I mean, I like it, <laughs> but no. I'm like, it's a one, and, you know, yeah, I, I, do, I remember seeing this on the, on the wall and passing it up at the time for, for whatever stupid reason. I, I will say I did get in, uh, I, I bought a copy, a 9.8 from, from Nick at Slabbed Heroes a couple years ago for right when it was sitting at that eight or 900. Um, and, you know, maybe, maybe that's something to mention. I, uh, you know, I used to watch a lot of content like this and you, you you see these big books and you hear these stories about, oh, I got this out of a dollar bin and or I, I, I found this, I picked it up off the rack when it first came out for cover or something like that. It, it can be very disheartening to look at these giant books <laughs> and think, you know, I, I have bills. I can't, <laughs> I'm never going to own these books. <laughs> it, it is tough. Um, I will say that uh, when I started changing the way I buy comics away from buying every first issue, every cover of my, you know, my 20 favorite titles and, and when I pared it down and then every few months used a chunk of that money to buy a, a quote unquote bigger book like this. Um, that's really that is when I started seeing much greater return on my investment, if that makes any sense. Um, when I, I I used to scoff at spending two, three, four, five, six hundred dollars on a book, but when I figured out a way to make that happen, uh, those are the books that I that I own personally right now that are worth much much more than that. So. Uh, it, if you're watching and you think these books are, are insane and crazy, um, you know, and, and like, like Joe was saying too, you can jump up from, from smaller books, build up. Um, 
just because they're pricey now doesn't mean uh, doesn't necessarily mean they're they they have to be out of reach. And a lot of these, the reason why why Mr. Longshore put these on the list is is they are such a great investment for the future. The the sky's the limit on a lot of these. So did did he color the book too? Oh, I believe he I believe he does. I I can't speak for this one in particular, but I buy a lot of his of his stuff. Um, and, and most of what he does now is for store exclusives, not exclusively, but mostly, but he'll put on videos on Instagram where he sort of walks through the process where he sketches it out, refines it, colors it. So I, I, I believe he does do the coloring on his own work. I, I can't speak to this one in particular, but, but certainly what he shows online, he's doing, he's doing the coloring. You know, cause like a lot of artists don't even know how great their, their work is. And I can just imagine, you know, him sketching, hey, what do you think? Think that's okay? And then people just like, oh, my God, you know, yeah. validating it that way. I mean, the colors are incredible on this book. They're unbelievable. And then the, the fade in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the background, I mean, it's just, it's stunning. It's so stunning. It is. I mean, it is the most moving cover I think I've ever seen. And yeah. I'm not saying it has to speak to everybody. Like, they're, you know, art is purely subjective, right? So some of us on here love it. Some of you guys at home may say, all right, it's okay, right? And that's fine, right? But, um, but, but, but it certainly, it certainly spe sp speaks to me. And I'm, I'm glad I was able to finally chase one of these down. So, um, all right, good stuff. All right, um, so we're switching gears to DC here a little bit. Um, so I, I don't own this book. Um, I've admired this book for, for a long, long time. Um, this is an, another Adam Hughes cover, a one in 10. Um, and, um, you know, another book that's just an absolutely stunning cover. Um, this book recently sold for 1300, so it's by no means pocket change. Um, one in ten on a forty-one thousand um, five hundred print run, roughly. Um, you know, means there's probably not a ton of these floating around out there. Currently, just over four hundred on the census. Um, but um, but in every way, shape, or form, a modern banger. And I put this following the other book because it's it's very much a cover buy. I never read this book, but I believe there's not a whole lot going for it internally. Um, but the cover itself. Um, really just just sticks out as something special yeah i mean this was one of those books that you know unpressable defects focused on early and uh so it, it, you know it, there was there was never like a good a good time to buy in it, it, it feels like uh you know, once once word got out, you know, back in I don't know 2015 or, or so, then you know, no one stood a chance. Um, I, I think there was also a, a, a nice catalyst uh, around the same time, which was the premiere of the Supergirl TV show. It originally, it was on CBS, and I think after the first season, it moved to CW. Um, I, I could see another catalyst, you know. Th of, you know, the laundry list of 50 upcoming DC projects over the last five years or so, there, there's been rumors about a Supergirl movie. Who knows? But, um, you know, if those rumors, um, even if just the rumor pops back up, uh, you know, could see some, some additional gains on this book. Um, otherwise, you know, I think it's probably a, a steady uh, grower at this point, but but nothing I see on the rise, and that would make it, you know, double or anything like that. But yeah, it's a classic. It's a it's a modern banger classic. <laughs> you know, when you when you think of artists and 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 some of their classic work, like if if Adam Hughes was getting inducted into the Hall of Fame, this cover would be like in the background as far as uh like an intro uh to his his uh his bust uh so to speak does sure. that make sense yeah I, well, put, well put 
the, those boots, man, they, <laughs> they set it off. And the cape in the background is just fire. It is just unbelievable. Are you guys showing every book that I want tonight? <laughs> no, no. Listen, I'll, I'll say this: putting this list together was 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 so fun, was so was so freaking fun, and there's so many that could be on. We're gonna do we're gonna do this again, right before long, uh, with a whole different list of books. Um, but um, yeah, these are all books I think all of us can admire and appreciate in one way. Or, I think I stopped way. looking because, like. You know, it, it's going to be a while before I even get to this book. I mean, I can afford it, but like my my mindset is elsewhere. You know, um, right. but man, now you're making me think differently. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> All right, uh, back to back, Adam Hughes. So Teen Teen Titans seventy five, um, one in twenty five Adam Hughes variant. Um, on a book that had about 33,000 copies ordered uh, last sale, uh, you know, just under, just under 650 bucks. What surprised me on this book was that there are only 63 listed on the census, um, which means that it's, it's probably pretty rare. Um, but um, you know, a book that I've always thought was, was super cool. Um, never had the opportunity to own, um, but wanted to put it out there, you know, the Teen Titans property within DC probably has, as we've touched on tonight on multiple of occasions, has has room to run. And uh, yeah, I just thought this book was 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 pretty cool. I mean, you yeah, see a lot of the Michael Turner influence right there with yeah. the incoming. I thought it was Michael Turner until right. <laughs> so protege, right? Protege. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not the boots that do it on this one either. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's not the contents either. Because I, mean, I, 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 I I I read. I think so, yeah, when you the get whole, into that, yeah, when you the get whole into series. The book, yeah, and by this really time, is. yeah, by this time the. Uh, I think a lot of the life had gone out of the title, unfortunately. So, yeah, I mean, to get a one in 25, you know, I, I guess the 75th issue is the anniversary. So you're going to get, but, you know, this far in, um, you know, you, you don't often see that. Why is there a rhino there? I'm just wondering what's the <laughs> rhino for. Oh, uh, Beast Boy. <laughs> oh, okay. a, you, you know why the rhino was there? To see if you could. See that there was a rhino there. <laughs> All right, so so Jessup Jessup asked me to put the, put this book on the oh, list. Man. I don't know a lot. I don't know a lot about this book, and um um, uh, but uh, Red Hood: The Lost Days, number one, uh, one in twenty five, Matina variant, um, and the book that had about thirty four thousand copies ordered, um, just seventy nine on the census. Last sale at nine point eight, around five hundred dollars. Um, Mateen is a controversial figure, obviously, but, but, but this cover is pretty badass. Um, yeah, I think, I think this is one of the ones that, that put him on the map for sure. I mean, this was, uh, 2010, I believe. Um, and this, this, um, mini series, uh, served as a bridge between, uh, death in the family and, um, and then, the Red Hood uh, first appearing in um, Batman 635. Um, so this it kind of explained what happened in between. Um, and it's, you know, Red Hood's first uh, solo title, uh, even, even if it's a mini. Um, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's gorgeous. I mean, and it's another one of those books that was, you know, early in the, uh, unpressable defects, uh, you know, and, and folks on Google plus, you know, um, you know, sort of doing cartwheels over it and, and certainly well, well deserved and, 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 and very hard to find. 
I yeah, bet you I mean, Jessa found this in a half price books for a dollar. Yeah. If he doesn't find it, then I know Carter's already found it in his next picture <laughs> video or something. What year did this come out? I think it was 2010. I think it was 2010. All right. Uh, what do we got next? One of my uh, favorites. John. Yeah, I mean, that so, is definitely a banger. Yeah, <laughs> this book is a banger um, for sure. And, and it, it, there's a couple of things that amaze me on, on this book. Um, this is a cover A. Um, sort of amazed that Detective Comics was only was getting less than 40,000 copies ordered at any point, but that's what the data said. Um, it's going for 550 bucks, and there's almost 2,000 on the census. So a lot of things here that amaze me about this book, um, but um, but a classic modern Joker cover by, by any standard. Um, and, um, you know, it shows you that you don't always need ratio variance to find books that absolutely explode. So, um, anybody got any thoughts on this one? Oh yeah. Uh, Jock, whenever I think of modern DC, I think of Jock and his covers. Um, it's just stuck in my head for some reason. And then this book has a lot going for it too. This is what Snyder's first Batman arc for DC, the Black Mirror. Is, it's is his, right? yeah first uh arc right. right uh and then you know as we said before on previous shows you know this cover is just iconic it's on everything mm -hmm. so, like wallets, it's on my, boxes it's on my short box that's the only thing i can afford <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wasn't this the the heath ledger inspiration for the the cuts on the cheek Right? Wasn't that oh, one of the yeah. he had inside yeah. his notebook? Yeah. Yeah. This is this I have actually found in the wild twice for like a couple bucks. It's been a couple years, but both times I found it, and I think they were just a couple months apart. I was like, I can't believe I found this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, just like uh, I, I think. Uh, uh, as someone was saying earlier, you know, this is why we get on our hands and knees and, and, you know, go through long boxes and everything. And I, I know when I found one of these, I, I definitely was, you know, on, on, on my knees looking at a, uh, a box that was, you know, on the floor. Um, and, uh, it paid off. Yeah. This is come in, uh, does this come in a, like a foil variant? I remember yeah. seeing one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I don't. Think, I mean, I don't think it was part of the original. Yeah. No, sure. not the original. Like, yeah, well, yeah. So there's two different foil ones. You have the um, convention exclusive that's like a virgin cover, and then there's a little mole uh, version from Mexico, oh, where it's okay. a replica uh, yeah. uh, uh, with a uh, trade dress and everything. Very cool. It seems like you know this one's been a big book for a long time, similar to that the Supergirl book. It's almost like the uh, it's not the newest generation of speculators who discovered it. It's the previous, like you said, the Google Plus, the CGC boards. Um, it seems like some of those bigger books like this one are really they look cheap. I mean, just this is an iconic yeah. cover for to think that nine point eights are going for five for, you know, five forty seven. They're. There are some Marvel E-list first appearances that are going. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it it, it does it does seem uh, cheap, especially during these times when you know the rising tide seems to be lifting all ships. But uh, right, yeah, some yeah. of these it seems are stagnant. Price right. All right, this is a mighty Mel V. He said you got you got to add this one, so. Um, so we added this, um, something is killing, killing the children. Number eight, one in 25 decal variant. Um, I'm a huge decal fan. Um, shout out to Dino who, who helped me get uh, a book from him that I've always wanted. Um, always, always wanted. And, uh, the craziest stories about trying to get this book from one retailer. Um, 
<laughs> another time. Um, uh, but this book, um, this book hadn't really blown up yet. This book always had a lot of respect, um, but it was only getting about 20,000 orders around issue number eight, right? Which is not crazy. It's getting a, a hell of a lot more than that now. I think it's twice that currently. Um, so a 125 um, on, on a... On a, on a print run in the 20,000s leads to, to very rare books. Um, so this, the last one sold that I could find was back in March for $1,300. I think it would go for a hell of a lot more than that right now. Yeah. And there's about um, 60 on the census, 58 on the census. So um, yeah, a, a beautiful cover um, for a series that, that couldn't be a hell of a lot hotter. I mean, probably the hottest indie series we've seen since Walking Dead or Saga. Um, just unbelievable. You, you yeah, know what this is... Oh, now go ahead, Aaron. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say real quick that this is probably definitely one of my favorite covers from Something is Killing the Children. Um, I even said last year that, to me, this was the cover of the year that came out. And uh, I like it so much, I have two copies. Uh, <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> uh, oh, the fun part, uh, I mean, the funny part was, I, you know, I probably paid a little bit over what, you know, four times ratio at the time. But to me, like, I, I wasn't really seeing it in the investment point. Like, it was just a cover I enjoyed and believed in. And to see prices now, like, you know, I'm considering selling raw copies, like, you know, I have a graded one for my personal collection, but I have a raw copy that's ready to send off for grading. And um, it's it's crazy to see what the prices are going for. And I kind of still want to hold out a little bit longer before I start selling my extra copies. But I mean, that might just be the greed in me. So you, yeah. you know what I think when I see this cover? If this was in an art gallery, it would sell for thousands. Oh, yeah. It's a work you know of art. I mean? That's how powerful this it is. cover is. I mean, uh, and I guess it's because I'm getting older and I appreciate things a little bit more. But much the same way the the ghost spider, the the background, the the colors, the pink, how the pink just pops off the book, off of the 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 her weapon, and off of the trees. It's amazing. It's amazing. Joe, Joe, you're making me cry because I think something's killing myself for not buying this book. <laughs> Gosh, <man. laughs> yeah, I don't have this one either. Yeah. So it's going to be killing us all. Just an amazing, amazing cover. Wow. Oh, man, it's beautiful. Was it Was it Mel who was talking about the dog, though? Oh, that's Andy. <laughs> On the head, is there? There is a dog. I can't unsee it now either. I'm sorry. A shih tzu. I think Andy said there's a shih tzu sitting on her head, and once you see it, you can't unsee it. So. Oh no! You guys ruined it for me. Oh. <laughs> All right. All right. I, I believe this was also a mill recommendation. This book is. This cover is as gritty as it gets. This is uh, something is killing the children. Number three, the second printing. Only 863 copies ordered by retailers, according to Comicron. Um, in making wow. this one of the um, more rare books um, in the series, um, you know, this cover is, you know, just, you know, just a little bit tough on the eyes at times. Just, you know, if you look at her back, um, but uh, but but really cool. Something I wish I had. I always pick up late printings. When nobody is paying attention, I don't know how I missed this one. I've got a bunch of them in the series. I don't have this one. I wish I did. Um, but a bit of cool cover uh, that's likely to get some attention as you know the series continues to to pick up steam. Um, there's very few books I'm missing in the Something Is Killing the Children collection. Um, the one off the top of my head is the the Prison number six, one and twenty five. Um, I definitely bought this. Uh, later, uh, I think I paid like 80 bucks for a copy or something like that, 60, 80 dollars somewhere in there. And I'm glad I picked it up, you know. Um, I guess I'm trying to do the completionist set where I have uh, all the covers that were put out by Boom. Um, and yeah, so 
Yeah, th- this this will be a ghost book for for people who are looking to to collect everything that's come out from this run for sure. All right. All right, so Adam Hughes again, right? So this is um, the Dirty Pair uh, run from the future, number one. Um, there's 139 copies of this book in the census. Last sold was last year for 425. I can't imagine this book going for that cheap in this current market if we were to see something this year. Um, but, um, but, but this is a book that Adam Hughes collectors, um, you know, um, are absolutely chasing. And, you know, I, I think the upside in this book is not so much to do with the characters. I really don't know what the future for the dirty pair is to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but, uh, but I do know rare Adam Hughes covers are in huge demand and, um, and this book is, uh, is right up there. And and Unintended. and people buy it for the amazing story inside, right? <laughs> <laughs> no? It was riveting, apparently. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I've only seen slab copies, so I've never had the opportunity to actually thumb through it. But uh, um, someday someone has to read one of these. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. I've got on my table in front of me a dirty pair book from. You know, I got it's like in black and white from, you know, the early '90s, right? And it was it was the same shtick. I mean, it wasn't Adam right. Hughes, but it was somebody drawing, you know, two attractive space rangers or whatever, right? Uh, in, in skimpy clothing. But uh, um, but yeah, th- th- this this is a book that uh, um, that th- th- that's tough to track down, and you know, an Adam Hughes classic for for those fans, you know. Y- you know, I, I did do a lot of work in this list, not all of it. I, I'm actually not the biggest Adam Hughes fan. I, I appreciate everything that he does, but I'm not an Adam Hughes collector. So um, it's just really when you're when you're doing research on on some of these books, how many of his books are in huge demand? Um, it, it's staggering. And there could have been a lot more on this list, frankly, um, than, than what we saw here. I mean, he he certainly has um, a cult following for sure. I'm not a big fan of his lines, though, at Icon. <laughs> you know, but, like, what a lazy autograph, you know? Like, that's the <laughs> last guy that says he should be tired at a con. You know, I've been signing all day. Really, bro. A-H. Exclamation <laughs> point. Oh, I forgot uh, the exclamation point. <laughs> that, that is such a lazy autograph for a great artist. You know, it is, but it's, it, it's, it's, it's kind of come iconic though. Like when you yeah. see that's it, true. Like, I'll give you that. It has. That's true. Yeah. I'll give you that. All right. I think we've got one more on this list. If I'm not mistaken. All right. Mm. Um, I was reluctant to put this book on here because I want it. I don't have it. Um, <laughs> you know. You know. Jenny Frizon is. Um, is. She's not an up and coming artist. I mean, she's here. Um, her work is amazing. This is not her first work. Um, I believe it was a hack slash Oz book, which was her first work, which is actually, frankly, not that visually appealing. Um, this book was her second, if I'm not mistaken, and um, and just absolutely stunning. You know, this book had 8,600 copies ordered total. And this is a cover C. So I have no idea how that breaks out. The short answer is, is that it's hard as hell to find. And the prices continue to escalate on this book. And I, and I think it's going to be, you know, sought, sought after for a long, long time. Um, you know, 425 was the last sale I saw. And that was for a 9.6. So to be clear, that was a 9.6 um, uh, in March. Um, just over 30 on the census. And... Uh, um, you know, just a book that I think probably has a long, long way to run, you know, given her popularity and um, and just how sort of captivating this this cover is. I can tell you that it it's it I um bought a copy and a lot off of eBay, a, a raw, and then got it graded and it hit nine four. I had a heck of a time 
getting rid of that one. Uh, surprisingly, I thought it would it would it would sell better even at nine four because you know the census is so uh, you know underpopulated. Um, but I would imagine nine eight would would demand quite a premium because of how difficult it is to find the nine eight of 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 this book. Um, well, I mean, I've been looking at a nine four, Steve. To be perfectly honest with you, for three fifty, yeah, totally it, right. And yeah. I'm not the biggest like nine four nine six. I, I, grade doesn't really get me excited. It, it's the book that gets me excited. I'm not hung up on grade, um, but um, but everything else I've seen is far out of reach from that. Is that and right? I, okay. And I'm, and I'm considering pulling the trigger on it potentially, but um, um. Yeah, I don't know when you're looking to sell that, but the whole game has changed, and I, I feel right. like, yeah, yeah, I was, I was, I was a man ahead of my time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it was a good eye to have this book because you could have picked it up relatively cheap, um, not that long ago, and it, it's really starting to pop on people's radars right now, um, in a big way. I mean, outside of you know the whatever Voltron collectors are out there, and they're out there, um, <laughs> <laughs> all four or five of them, but. Um, no, right. I'm, joking. I'm joking, but um, um, uh, yeah, the, the, this is just um, you know, a, a great modern cover uh, that I think probably will, will we'll see some some new highs here. I mean, does she even do a bad cover? You know, her her first one we can talk about at some yeah. point in the future. It was not great, and I don't know if it was. Because of the title, she was trying to make it a little edgier. Um, it wasn't a great. It wasn't a great one. This book is often credited as her first cover, um, and, and and it really isn't. Now I don't know if maybe she did this one first and it came out later. I don't know what there could be one of those sort of situations, but it's Hack Slash Oz three maybe. I, I don't know. You can find it out there. It's not. It's not a great cover. This on the other hand is is quite quite good. You know, but her stuff isn't watered down like Momoka, you know, Momoko, <laughs> you know, it's like, like she picks her, her spots very well, you know, does Absolutely. that make sense? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm not, yeah, Peach Momoko, she, I mean, her, her, her work for me is wildly inconsistent and I know she's got a huge cult following, so. Um, no offense to anybody out there who absolutely loves her, because I, I think some of her covers are, are great, and some of them are just not for me. Um, um, but 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 Jenny Frizen seems to be one of those artists where she's really consistent, and a lot of people really appreciate her work. So um, you know that could be an important book, you know, down the road. You know, I never used to buy Wonder Woman. Until she started doing those damn covers, <laughs> you know, and it's oh, like they were doing buying these Wonder Womans, but they they were just jaw dropping. I mean, it's they were just unbelievable. Yeah, really, um, re really are. But I think books like that, uh, the biggest market is those fans. Obviously, I, I uh, the biggest part of my PC is probably the the artists that i love and going after their unique covers or their first covers and it might not be something that the market loves um but i i like i love to chase Mirka and dolfo kind of with with ultra um i i am i try to remind myself as i'm doing that to to not go out too far on that limb uh because artists who are popular now 10 years from now 20 years from now not everyone's going to be Jim Lee, Todd McFarlane. So uh, I, I really force myself to look at it more of a, what, what do I put value on this rather than as an investment necessarily. Yeah, I, I do the same thing. And, I'm, and, I, and I know when I buy a lot of these books, they're, they're just for me. I, there's no spec value in them at all. Um, but uh, and I'm not, I mean, if, if I really, if a cover really resonates with me, if an artist really resonates with me, then it's, I'm not worried about what their popularity might be 10 years down the road. It's just a book that I'm happy to have uh, in my collection. So, you know, Ji Hung Lee, I buy almost everything he does because of that, that, that ghost spider cover. And, um, um, and, you know, I'm not expecting 
to ever turn much of it around for anything. It's just stuff I like to have. So, um, well, anyways, thank you everybody for, for joining us tonight. I hope you enjoyed the list. Uh, next week, we're going to go through um, a new list of books, totally different theme. Uh, stay tuned and, uh, and uh, let us know what you think. <laughs>